It's a big pleasure to me to introduce the Professor Nicolas Santier from the University of uh, Buenos Aires. Professor Nicolas is a, a professor of the University of Buenos Aires, is a researcher of the CONICET. It's a pleasure to us uh, uh, meet, uh, meet you here, Professor, and thank you for accepting the invitation. Please, Professor. Thank you. I thank you, Dixon. Really, I thank you for the invitation because it's a, it's a nice opportunity, really. So I think I thank you <laughs> for that. So um, the talk will be the lectures will be about um, some how to apply mathematics tools, PDs mostly, to model some sociological or economic phenomena. And really, this is a nice subject because you can. I really, so this is a subject I started like uh, five or six years ago with a colleague of mine, a friend of mine, Juan Pablo Pinasco from the University of Buenos Aires, and with whom I did most of, uh, of the work about that. And really what, uh, what we like about this kind of subject is that you can do something interesting at, from a modeling point of view quite easily. You don't need that much, um, that a big, deep mathematical theory to do something. You need to know some stuff, but not that much. And what I want, what I would like to do in these lectures is show you the kind of tools you you need to treat from mathematical point of view some uh, opinion formation process. So let's start seeing what it looks like. So now I will ju just give you some very light introduction and then progressively we'll go deeper into the subject okay and i would like to to add them between a modeling part with some simulation and a more mathematical part right just because i guess both sides goes uh, go uh, goes together you can you cannot it's not good to ignore one side and for the other so let's say so the, the thing is that there are a lot of subjects that sociologists um, that are being studied from a long time ago from uh, by the so sociological community, like for instance opinion formation process, which will be the, the main subject of my lectures. And this is very intuitively this is very easy to to understand the idea because you imagine you are all discussing about some subject. What do you think about uh, Bolsonaro's politics or Biden politics? Or what do you think about vaccination? Let's say, to say, to say a few. And really, everybody has some kind of opinion about that. And when you, when you interact with your friend, your family, your colleague at work, you will start to, to, to discuss and maybe we'll, you will slightly change your mind about this subject right so the, uh, the main question here would be what are what drives the, this this kind of of uh, mindset changing and how these small changes everybody does how they do reflect on the whole population level right yeah imagine you are in a period of um, presidential election, everybody has a candidate, you exchange opinion, maybe you change your views, or you convince other people. But as a global result, there will be one president elected by the whole population. So it would be quite interesting if, you, if we could understand how the microscopic dynamic, which takes place among individuals when they are discussing, when they are talking to each other, how these micro microscopic behaviors do propagate to become visible at the macroscopic level of the population. And you can do that not only with open information, you can do that with other kind of uh, economical or sociological process, like for instance, wealth distribution. Because there is a, a, something very amazing when you look at how the wealth in a country is distributed. Well, um or say if, if there is a, a big um middle income 
population or what what is the percentage of of the population with a high income or low income and there is this is every every time this is the same kind of of curve which is like a gamma distribution and this um there is an economist, Pareto, an Italian economist from the end of the 19th century, who observed that this kind of wealth distribution is quite stable among uh, between countries. When you pass from a country to another, when you uh, when you look at different period of time, you you in general you will observe some very strong similarities. Right. <laughs> so this kind of similarities. Um, just in, uh, started to to interest physicists, like um, maybe thirty from thirty years ago, and because they think that if there is some kind of universal pattern, maybe you can find some very simple mechanism behind that could explain this kind of pattern. So they started to to invent it and to to study very toy models of opinion formation wealth distribution or other kind of uh, economical or sociological phenomena. They, they, they did that with uh, tools um, particular to, to the physicist, to the and they, they, they did get very good results. So this is not to say that they can explain everything, but at least they found some simple mechanisms and can reproduce reality. Right? So it's quite interesting. So, for instance, so yeah, um, okay. So this, I guess, I just explain it. Okay, about what I understand by opinion formation process. And just to be clear, this is this is not um, something just to just to, to play with. This has, this kind of opinion formation models has have strong impacts on reality. Okay, just I mentioned the example of presidential election, for instance, but think of um, vaccination. You have people in, in favor of vaccination, you have, you have people against vaccination, you have people in between, which may, may be like undecided, yes, okay? But they are convincing each other. But at the same time, this purely sociological dynamic of convincing people, talking to people about vaccination has a very, strong impact on the dynamic of the disease right yeah we all saw that with uh, with the covid pandemic when government uh, just um put a low lockdown or obligation of vaccination or strong incentive so you have quite a, you have a couple dynamic between the, the disease dynamic you can you can model it by a SEER or CIS model or something maybe more complex and socio a sociological dynamic and this is not it's it seems quite obvious right but really it's I guess the first paper serious paper scientific serious paper mathematical one about that are from the beginning are from ten years ago and now with the COVID motivated by the COVID pandemic. There are a lot more of investigation about that. Okay, so this is kind of, it's kind of nice to have nice, so on the one hand, good epidemiological model, and on the other hand, to have some kind of understanding of the sociological dynamic in place, and to have tools to study that. So let's say so. Just yeah, I was just before that I was mentioning you that. Physicists were the first to to really enter this kind of of issues with tools from from mainly from statistical physics, right? Because the idea here is very elementary, very simple. You just think not of you think of an individual, a human, as a particle, and when two particles collide, that is, two human encounters, then you see that they exchange some or opinion or wealth or any meaningful quantity you like. But from a physicist's point of view, this would be like particles exchanging energy, some kind of energy. So, and you have all the all the tools from stati the statistical mechanics to deal with that. 
mostly based on the Boltzmann equation, which is um, an integral differential equation. And we will see that we get back to this kind of equation, which, which is, they are hard to study. Yeah, this is still a very hot topic in investigation. And most of the time, when your model is not that easy to, to understand from an analytical, an analytical point of view, you, d you do massive computation, computational simulation, very massive, because usually in your model, you have a lot of parameters. So you have some parameters, and you want to understand the impact of each parameter. And to do that, you have to make some heavy computation intensive simulation for each value of your parameters, see what happened. Usually, there is some kind of uh, randomness, the dynamic. So you have to make, let's say, a, a lot of simulation with the same kind, with the same set of parameters to average over this all the simulation to get something meaningful. So this is quite intensive, but it's very interesting. They can they can study a lot of models. They have they obtain very interesting results. So this is very very good, but it's from the mathematical point of view, it's not easy to, to deal with. So I put there uh, some big name in the field. Right? So obviously, I forgot a lot. Sure. Just I wanted to mention here in Brazil, there is Celia Antenodo and uh, Nuno Kokidakis. Yeah, these are the two I know. Okay, so there, there are probably more than, more than them, so I apologize. But I know these two. And this is good um, right okay so okay so and math mathematician entered this this new field of sociophysics and econophysics much later as usual like for me it started like at the beginning of, of the year 2000 around 2000 2005 um, things started to to move forward in the mathematical community Mostly due to um, uh, Italian guys, uh, Pare uh, Lorenzo Paleschi, um, Savarani, Giuseppe Toscani, because these guys come from the mathematical side of Boltzmann equation. So they realized that they could apply all they know, as they know a lot, about Boltzmann equation, statistical mechanics, all they know about, about, about this kind of things. They could apply them to deal with um, to the modeling of uh, economic and sociological phenomena. And from that, there has been a good deal of work. Okay? So, for instance, there is a very nice book by uh, Paresky and Toscani. Yeah, I forgot to write the reference here, which is from 2013, which uh, the title is something like uh, in interacting with the agent system or something like that. Later, I will, I will find the, the precise, precise reference. And it's a nice reference because it gives you a nice overview of the subject with a lot of mathematical tools. And I use this book a lot when preparing this lecture. <laughs> so the thing is that you will end, from a mathematical point of view, you will, when you try to, to really study this kind, the, the toy models introduced by physicists, you will end up with interval differential equations that we will try to simplify some way to recover something about the long time behavior of the solution. But the interesting thing here is that you will naturally deal with probability measure because you will deal with the distribution of opinion in your population or the distribution of wealth in your population. And a distribution of something is a probability measure, which can be regular, have a density being nice and so on, but which can be very singular. You can have some direct masses. And we will see direct masses happen, uh, happen naturally by the, in the dynamic. So you need to, to deal with PDEs, but for when, but when, where the, the solution, the, the solution of the PDE is a function from time to the set of probability measures. So this gives you a nice twist to a very, your know, classical subject. 
but this is not very complicated to grasp and it gives you a lot of uh, freedom. This is quite nice. Okay, so the, the plan of the lecture will first now, what I would like to do is show you some uh, two classical, very classical models of open information models that um, they are from the maybe from they were published like 15 years ago more or less or 10 years ago something like that and see how you can treat them from a mathematical point of view more or less from a mathematical point of view but we'll do things quite informally heuristically just to see what kind of equation we can expect at the end right and then may probably tomorrow I would like to um, to give uh, to present you some results about first order PDs in uh, in the form of conservation law, like transport equation. But for this solution, uh, where uh, the solution at, at time t is a probability measure, how you deal with that? And then on Friday, the, the, the last lecture. I will present you another set of uh, modeling tools based on um, uh, Lorenzo Paleski and Giuseppe Toscani approach, which is more similar to maybe to statistical mechanics and Boltzmann equation, and see what happens there, what, what we can do. So I won't do any proof or almost any proof, but I would like to give you the feeling of the freedom you can have when modeling this kind of phenomenon. And the tools, some of the tools you can use to uh, to study the resulting dynamics. Right. So now, so I will switch from this PDF to another one, where we will start to review to see this uh, this simple model here. Okay, simple, but still we can we, we will find some some stuff I think very interesting. So just give me five minutes just to switch from one PDF to the other. The other one is this one. I guess um, maybe if you're interested, I I guess I could give the, this PDF to be to be put on the website of the, of the conference. Please, Professor. Use them later. We, no we love it. We love it. <laughs> sure. That, that's, maybe I will, <laughs> if I spot some error, maybe I will try to correct them before. Hopefully not, not not that much. Okay, so let's see. Let's see about time. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay. So the first kind of models are based on the voter model, which is a very simple model, very studied, completely understood, but which is like a, a benchmark, and it allows you to to make a lot of uh, of variance. Interesting. Okay, so in this model, very simple, every individual in, your pop in my population has only two opinions. Here I put red and blue, but it could be I will vote for no, say, uh, Lula and I will vote for Bolsonaro, yeah, to, say, to say something. Right? So anything you want, I'm against vaccination or I'm, or I'm in favor of vaccination, okay? Any of ex two extreme opinion, the one you like. Okay, the opinion per se doesn't matter. What matters is how do people interact and how uh, in this in an interaction how do people will change their opinion in some way. So here the dynamic is very 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 simple. You pick one individual at random in the population, then this individual choose someone else in the population and just copy its opinion right so if initially i was i was blue i i want to interact with someone which is red and just i will copy his, his, his opinion so i after the interaction i will have opinion red okay so i wanted to vote for let's say trump I started to talk with someone who wanted to who wanted to vote for Biden, and then he, he convinces me, and now I want to vote for Biden. Right. So this is very very simple dynamic, which is very completely understood from a probabilistic point of view, PD point of view, everything. 
but it gives you a lot of freedom because you can add noise to the dynamic. Let's say you will change opinion, but only with some probability. Okay, so now what is the influence of, of this noise on the dynamic? Or maybe you can put in your population, you can put uh, some fraction of individuals that are completely um, stubborn in the sense that they think red from the start and they will never change their mind. Or maybe you can put some people, maybe you can uh, discriminate people, you can um, separate people between uh, according to their, um, this, uh, their, um, their willingness to change their mind. Maybe some people change their mind now, just to talk to them and then change their mind. Maybe other, not that much. They will change their mind, but with a low priority. And maybe some other people will change their mind, but with a higher priority. So you see, you can add a lot of features to your, to your individuals. And this complicated, this complicates a lot the dynamic. Okay. And when you, when you had too much feature, maybe we cannot study anything, but the, this is a point of view of the, of the physicist. You start with a very toy, very simple model, a toy model, maybe not that realistic, but something you can study. And then you start adding some features to study the impact of these features. But, at a, at a slow pace, easily, okay. Just to 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 keep with a model which you can do something, you can you can say something about it and about the parents, okay. So and the thing is that from a physicist point of view, this is a very attractive model because this is only the translation with within this uh, opinion formation framework of the very classical Ising model in statistical mechanics. So for the physicist, this is a piece of cake. This is very, very good. OK, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see two, some modification of this basic model due to snatched and uh, snatched uh, variant. These, these are Polish guys. And uh, the paper is from 2000. It's very highly cited. If you look at Google Scholar, I did that yesterday. It has some uh, something like uh, like one one thousand five hundred citations. So this is not bad just for one single paper of eight pages. And just to see the, the impact this kind of model has on the physicist and on the mathematical community too. Okay, so the idea here is. Everybody has an opinion, which is before it was red and blue. Now it will be plus one, minus one. Okay, the same. Okay, you select a pair of agents, a pair of individuals, and you make them interact in some way. And the idea of the dynamic that Snage uh, the Snage uh, pro uh, proposed in 2000 is to propagate either consensus or disagreement. So let's see how, how it works in, um, in a 1D, one dimension configuration. But you can do that in any dimension you like. You can do that on any graph you like, okay? But the thing is that when you do that on a graph where some, uh, when, for instance, I'm a node of the graph and I, I have access to some of the other nodes of the graph, these are the people I can interact with. Then the topology of the network in, may play a critical a critical role, and there are a lot of possible networks. You have a regular lattice like uh, Z um, Z Z square, or um, you can have um, a small uh, small world network, or you can have a scale free network, or you can have uh, error of energy network. So. There are a lot of um, networks you can study your dynamic on, and usually do, doing that from a theoretical point of view is not easy. So most of the time you do that by heavy um, simulate computationally heavy simulations. <laughs> you can you can superimpose um, different layer of network to account for uh, different. Uh, different aspects of individual. You can put a layer of an, of an economical layer, 
you can put um, maybe an opinion, a political layer if you're more left uh, or left-minded or right-minded, for instance. And you can put some links between both layers and see how everything uh, goes together and what is the resulting dynamic. But it's theoretically it's not easy at all to study. So usually we keep it we will keep it thin, right? Okay, so in 1D, Snash model is the following. So let's say you 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 selected at random two people, two individuals in your population. Okay, these are the two guys here in the middle, right? So I don't know if I can write, just give me a second, just to be a uh, web right. Uh, okay, you selected these two and they're just uh, what do that? Okay, so you select these two guys and these two guys do agree. They share the same opinion. Either plus one or either minus one, but they both have the same opinion. And now this agreement between these two guys, you want to propagate it to the neighbor, their immediate neighbor. Okay, the neighbor are this one and this one here. And you see that the, these two neighbors will end up with the red opinion. The opinion my two my two individuals share at the beginning. Right. So you did propagate agreement, right? And the second twist the snatch and snatch there added to the dynamic is to propagate disagreement. Okay. So if you want to propagate disagreement, we'll do exactly sorry, sorry, uh, okay. You will do exactly the opposite. Now I pick two guys and these two guys do not agree. One think one and the other the other guys think minus one. And this disagreement propagates to the neighbor, meaning that so still up cha 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 cha. Mean I mean by that that this guy will copy the opinion of this one. So here nothing will change, but because they already had blue opinion. And these two guys will share the same opinion. Okay. Meaning that the neighbor on the right will have will end up with opinion red. Okay. So the disagreement between my two individuals, my two individuals propagated to the neighbors. Right? So you have two competing dynamics. One which consists in propagating agreement, and the other one which consists in propagating disagreement. So you see, this is quite simple, okay? And from that, you can put, you can add all the modification you want. You can play with this uh, microscopic interaction interaction rule. You can put everything you want, okay? And see what happens at the end. So how we do that, okay? So in the paper, Snash and Snash Vero study the dynamic using only using um, simulations okay a lot of simulation and among the results they obtained they obtained the following diagram so i, I would just delete okay I, okay and maybe i will put some colors because uh, the this diagram i just i copy pasted it from uh, Snash and uh, the paper of Snash and Snash there. Okay, so I, I didn't simulate it. Later, I will show you some other simulation, right? <laughs> so they, what they did, so in their paper, the, the opinion are not, are not plus one and minus one, they are A and B, okay? And so they notice first that there are two possible mm, absorbing states, okay? Two possible ending states for the dynamic. Everyone has the same opinion, either plus one, that is all A, or minus one, that is all B. Or there is a third state, which is complete disagreement, which, uh, which consists in um, A, this one here, uh, this one here, 
a b a b a b a b a b plus one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one which is due to this um this rule which uh, propagates disagreement right and to study to have a, a feeling about the, the dependence of the houses how the, the, the dynamic ends with respect to the initial condition what they did is that they assumed that everybody can so they, they, they played with the initial proportion of individuals thinking b right so you see this proportion can be can be zero okay no one initially is thinking b everybody thinks a so obviously everybody keeps on thinking a right there is the opposite symmetric state where everybody initially thinks b that is no one thinks a so obviously you propagate agree you propagate there is no disagreement you only propagate agreement and every everybody already agree so nothing happens and they observed what happened in between when the in, when the initial proportion of uh, individual thinking b varies from zero to one and they observed that well at the end when you end up the simulation because you you end up in uh, one of these three final states you see the the proportion of uh well the this one okay i will put some colors on the curves because it's not very easy to read i guess so this one here is when everybody ends up thinking uh, b okay there is a symmetrical curve where everybody ends up thinking a okay so everything is symmetrical because there is no so a and b plays a symmetrical role and due to the propagation of disagreement you have in between this uh, complete uh, com this very disordered state where everybody when where everybody disagrees more which is in uh, in yellow here okay <laughs> So they, they obtained this diagram using only simulation, a lot of simulation, okay? But this simulation, these are very, very easy to, to call. Right? Python, MATLAB, anything you want, it's very easy to call. It doesn't take that long to run, okay? Okay, but still it's significant. And it's maybe a necessary first step, step before starting to make some theoretical analysis because you see here if you get something interesting or not right okay so this is nice and i must mention that in the paper snatch and snatch baron show a lot more results than this one okay but they all get there they, they get they got them only using um simulations which is nice okay there yeah, no shame but so but still we would like to understand a little bit better how theoretically we could try to to analyze the dynamic and understand how the the final proportion of individuals thinking b at the end depends precisely on the initial proportion of individuals thinking b initial right to get some maybe some a deeper insight into the dynamic and here is when where you you would like to have some to obtain some partial differential equation explain some um, um, um encoding the evolution of the proportion of individuals thinking b right or something like that some partial differential equation related to a meaningful quantity of the system right so the first question is okay nice but how how can i get this equation first thing and then okay i got it how can i study it okay how can i maybe prove that it's well posed it has a unique solution in some class of functions 
and to study its long-term behavior. What happens to this solution when t goes to infinity? And hopefully, it would be nice if what we could get theoretically matches what we observed um, numerically, right? Otherwise, maybe there is a problem with it. Okay. So, <coughs> okay. So I will present you some uh, a theoretical analysis done by. I will just here delete. Okay. So I will present you a theoretical analysis done by uh, two physicists in 2003, Slanina and Lavica. So this is very interesting because they find the correct equation. They deduced from them a lot of interesting results, but they did that with maybe not um, not as rigorously as a mathematician would do. Okay, but everything is good. Everything works fine, right? So what I would like to do is present you the uh, the way they deduce this equation heuristically. Okay, with uh, I don't want to focus on technical details. But just I want to see I want to to see how, what kind of equation can get at the end, okay? and to see how what are the possible mathematical difficulties in studying this equation, okay? and then tomorrow we'll go a little bit deeper into this kind of equation, and on Friday I will present you another way of another way of modeling uh, exchange exchanges of opinion. Based, more based on a kinetic point of view, which will lead us to um, focal Planck equation, which some, in some cases can give you the same kind of equation we'll get now using Slanina and Larica's uh, framework. Right? Okay, so first of all, we will, we will, an say, we will analyze uh, the, the, the dynamic of Nash Veron and the Water dynamic on a complete graph, meaning that everybody in the population can interact with everybody. Okay. So obviously this is not realistic. Okay. As maybe I at the scale of a country, not everybody can interact with anybody, of course. So you have to put in that case a network of relationships. But from a mathematical point of view, it's, it simplifies things a lot. So we'll stick with this complete graph assumption. And Slanina and Lavica just simplified a little bit the, the, the dynamic of snatched and snatched barrel. They just focused on the propagation of consensus. Right? So <laughs> in their setting, their dynamic is the following. Just you pick at random two guys in the population, okay, individual I and individual J, okay, and if they disagree, nothing happens. Just they keep on disagreeing and that's it. But if they do agree, okay, this is this point here. Recall, recall that uh, sigma I is plus one or minus one. It's it's the opinion of the individual I. So if they do agree, they will try to propagate this agreement to a neighbor of them, to a third individual in the population, okay, individual K. And this new guy, K, will get will copy the common opinion of I and G. That, this is like like if no, uh, two guys, Javier and Cesar, think the same and they unify and go on to convince Celia, let's say. Okay, and Celia get convinced. Right? So you repeat that on and on and on and on. Okay, you pick two guys, if they agree, they convince a third guy, you repeat that and see what happens. And for the voter, the voter dynamic, the Slania and Lavica considered in the paper is the same as before. Yeah, it's this one. So you pick a random guy, I, another guy, J, is a population, A, and J, copy I. And that's it. Right? Okay. 
And the thing is that now I would like to understand what happened okay, from a theoretical point of view. So what would be nice is I would very much like to have one quantity telling me exactly how the states of my population. And the thing is that since we are working on a complete graph where anybody can interact with anybody, you just need one quantity, which is called magnetization. And is defined that way. This is the mean of the opinion in the whole population. Okay, so this is a sum of, sorry, a sum of plus one and minus one divided by the number of individual in my population. Okay, so n plus is the number of individual with opinion one, and n minus is the number of individual with opinion minus. Right? And this quantity tells you exactly what happens because I know n, yeah, the total number of individual in my population. So if someone tells me the value of m, since, for instance, n minus is just, uh, n minus is uh, just, I would have write it because it's obvious, but still maybe good to write it. n minus is only n minus n plus, okay? So if I know m and someone told me, tells me the value of m, the magnetization, then I know the, to the number at this moment of individuals thinking plus one. And obviously, then I know also the number of individuals thinking minus one, right? So that's it. I know the state of my population. So the, the thing is that now I would like, I, I would like very much to, to have to get some kind of information about the evolution in time of this quantity, the magnetization. Well, this is called magnetization because uh, in reference to statistical mechanics in the Ising model, uh, there is some uh, physicists try to model magnetization phenomenon. So the name comes from, from there, okay? But for us, it just, it's, it's just a, a random name, okay? Without much significance. But for a physicist, it has a very strong significance, okay? <laughs> so let's see. The thing is that if you look at the dynamic, it's, there is some kind of randomness in the dynamic, right? Because at every step of the dynamic, you pick at random two guys, or one guy in the bottom model, you pick at random another guy, and this, this new guy will, there is something will happen with its opinion. So there is some kind of randomness. So my M, maybe it's not very good to think of it as, as a fixed quantity. Maybe it's better to think of it as a, as a random variable, right? But this random variable takes value in between minus one and plus one, okay? See, when M, when the magnetization is minus one, this means that everybody thinks minus one. That is, N minus is equal to N, right? On the other hand, when m is equal to one, okay, this means that everybody thinks one. Okay, so these are the two opposite ordered states of the system. And on the opposite, when m is close to zero, around zero, this means that n plus and n minus are almost the same. So there is almost 50% of the population, almost, right? Around 50% of the population, around half of the population thinking plus one, and the other half thinking minus one. This is more like a disordered state. Right? So what, we, what would be good would be if you could find some, if you could find some info, to get some information concerning the distribution of this random variable. Yeah? And to see how this this uh, this random variable may involve the time, if you could get something, right? And we will see that when n goes to infinity, so that is in the limit of an infinite an infinite population, we will get an equation, a partial differential equation, which uh, a deterministic partial differential equation, 
And this kind of steps, when n goes to infinity, the noise disappear can be justified using uh, tools from probability theory. But not that that's not, not easy to right? You need to define a process, a generator, prove there is effectively a stochastic process with this generator, and study um, the random part of your process, the mathematical part of the process, and check that this part goes away as n goes to infinity. So just, I state it very informally, but this is not hard. This is quite uh, standard in probability in probability theory, but it's not that it's not that it's not that easy. So this part I will just ignore it, okay, and just focus on the equation we get in the limit when n goes to infinity. But first, just before going to that, it would be nice to simulate the two dynamics we have, okay? The water dynamic and the snatch. The, the, the dynamic introduced by snatch modified, slightly modified by slanine dynamic, right? And what I would like to do is to keep track of the magnetization, the distribution of the magnetization as time goes by, okay? So I, I did a simulation, which is not complicated at all, okay? And I will show you the result. And we will see that just looking at the how the distribution of the magnetization evolves in time in the two models, just we will get some intuition that the two models will will not lead us to the same kind of equation. Right? One will be a transport equation, and the other one will be a diffusion equation. And this will be very clear from the simulation. Okay, so that's that's why I, I like to make some some simulation before because it gives me intuition. Yeah, when when I don't know how, what to do, what to expect, simulation might might. Yeah, it's like a, a good drawing, a good picture. So <coughs> just give me uh, a few minutes. I will just fetch my simulation. Uh, so it's. Here, yes, okay, okay, so just okay. Again, uh, I don't know if. Can you see, can you see my screen with um, with a plot or not? No, no. No. Okay, okay. Just I have to switch screen. This one here. Maybe now you should see it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I started with a magnetization equal to uh, zero point two. Okay, and a population, I guess, of uh, ten thousand individuals, right? The thing is that the first plot uh, appears slightly after my um, the initial time. And this is for the voter model, just the, the most basic one, where I pick at random a guy, then I pick a neighbor of this guy, and the neighbor just copy the opinion of the first the first guy I chose, right? Just if. And just I, I show you the distribution of magnetization. So to do that, I did a lot of uh, runs of the simulation, and I show you the histogram for the distribution of the magnetization. But not very important. So just look at just so imagine that at the beginning the magnetization was concentrated at zero point two. Okay, and then look at what happened. You see the magnetization starting to diffuse, right, slowly. And you see a, a direct mass is, the mass is accumulating a lot in one, right? Meaning that when the magnetization is one, this means that the population end, end up with everybody agreeing, thinking plus one. But you see at the same time, there is another accumulation of mass at minus one, okay? When the magnetization is minus one, this means that Everybody in the population ends up with um, minus one 
as an opinion, right? <laughs> and you see that in between, the distribution of magnetization is, is getting lower and lower. Okay, there are a lot of fluctu random fluctuation because maybe I should have made I should have make a more runs, okay, just an average uh, over more runs to to get rid of that noise. But still, you can see that all the mass, all the initial mass, is going to plus one and minus one, and in between, it's disappearing. Right, and the dynamic was like a diffusion, right? So maybe okay so you see there is almost no mass remaining in between minus one and one and you see clearly the mass diffusing toward towards the two extreme one and minus one so maybe this, this could tell you one thing maybe the equation we will get for the distribution of magnetization for the water model will be like a diffusion equation or something like that and on the other hand when I look at the, um, when I look at the, the final state of the system, more or less, I see like two direct masses appearing at one and minus one. So we are dealing probably with a diffusion process behind a diffusion equation, but at the end, we should get as a limit of my distribution of my position we should get some combination of direct masses, one mass at one and another mass at minus one. So you see that we, with a very simple dynamic, we, we get non-trivial limits, direct masses, okay? The highly singular measures, right? Okay. So now let's see the other dynamic, the dynamic of snatch and snatch zero. When you pick two guys at random, and if they agree, then they unite forces and convince a third person in the, in the population. Okay. And we will see here that just I will launch the other dynamic. We'll see that the dynamic is qualitative, qualitatively is very different. So just give me the mm height. -mm -mm. <coughs> I just have to share my screen. Coming here. Okay, so here too, the initial condition was the same as before. The main, but I, I didn't realize that. But in, unfortunately, I guess I didn't. Um, I didn't recorded the initial condition, right? So there should be initially a direct mass here in uh, at 0 0.2. Later I will try to to change that slightly, but there should be initially there is a direct mass here, right? And now I would like to see how the direct mass evolves in time. Okay, with the previous dynamic we saw a diffusive behavior. The direct mass just becomes like a, like a Gaussian more or less going um you know where the mass is is spreading toward one and minus right but now we'll see for the other dynamic the behavior is completely different right you see like the, the direct mass is more like traveling to the right but it's not we can't see much of a diffusion here Right. This is this is only my my peak, my direct mass, just moving almost and changed towards the right. Okay. So this tells me that maybe the equation we'll get for the this dynamic will not be of a diffusive kind. Maybe it would be more like a more, maybe more like a, a transport equation where you you take some initial mass some initial distribution and just you you move it in time maybe with some kind of distortion but essentially you move it there is no diffusion right so the good thing is that these are very simple simulations right but it tells me that these two dynamics might lead us to 
essentially different equation, really different equation, right? And at the end, in both dynamics, we end up with a direct mass, which is not that obvious, right? But which means, from a modeling point of view, which, means, which only means that at the end, everybody tends to share the same opinion, plus one here, plus one in that case, right? In the, for the other dynamics, the voter dynamic, this would be plus one with some probability and minus one with some other probability. And it would be nice to see what are these probabilities. How, they depend, how do they depend on the initial condition? Okay. <coughs> Sorry, I will go back to the PDF. Right. Okay. So, uh, is is this okay for everybody? Okay. So just if you have yeah, questions, yeah. just uh, don't just don't bother. Just ask it. Okay, right. Okay. So maybe we have two dynamic. We and now the question would be to find the equation for the distribution of the the magnetization, and we will do that using a very standard procedure among physicists, which is based on master, on the master equation. So this is very informal, heuristical, but it will give us the good, the right equation at the end. Right? So let's see how it works. OK. OK, so videos, yeah, yeah. So first, just there is a technicality here. I need to, um, to say something about um, how, at which rate do we pick at random two individuals to make them interact, okay? So you, the usual thing here is to use a Poisson process. This means that the number of interaction in, in, in a given time window of length, small length delta t, is distributed following a Poisson distribution, okay? So the rate of the Poisson process just fix the, the, the time scale, okay? So there is no loss of generality, really, to, to, to consider that the, the Poisson process uh, has rate equal to one, okay? This just means that the, the expected number of interaction in a small time window of length delta t is uh, delta t, only that, okay? If, you, if we put lambda equal to two, we, should, we would have that in this time window of length delta t, the mean number of interaction will be two times delta t. So you see that you only fix the, the speed of the dynamic, okay? So we put the rate equal to one because it's easy. Okay, just here I recall the distribution of uh, the definition of the, of the Poisson variable, right? And think of delta t as small. So this exponential is one minus delta t. This one is delta t. And the probability is that there, ha there are more than two interaction is of the other delta t square. And this kind of delta t square, I will ignore them completely, okay? I'm interested in what happened up to the other data. Okay, so now let's say. <coughs> okay, so we look at the distribution for the magnetization. So this, this is the probability that at time t plus delta t, the probability is that my system has magnetization equal to n. So we use um, the I, um, the very basic result of probabilities, uh, total probability theorem, something like that. When you just see what can what ha what can happen between time t and time delta t, okay, then not much. Maybe there was no interaction between time t and time t plus delta t. Okay, so if there was no interaction. The probability for the magnetization to be equal to M is the same as the probability of the for the magnetization to be equal to M at time t. Right? But maybe the, 
there was there was an interaction, exactly one interaction. So I put the priority here to have exactly one interaction. And then I look at all the possible interactions that may have occurred, right? So I will sum over all the possible values of the magnetization and see what is the priority that in this one interaction, the magnetization did pass, did pass from this M prime to M times the probability that at time t the magnetization was equal to m prime, m prime right? and at last there is a case where the remaining case where between time t and time t plus delta t there was there were more than two interactions but this occur with negligible probability so i ignore it, right so i replace uh, these two priority here with their values right just Reorganize a little bit everything, and I got that. Just it, it just reorganized, nothing less. Okay, and for now I would I won't bother very much with these transition priorities because for now I don't care. Okay, so we are just deducing the Maxwell equation for any dynamic. Okay, because the precise dynamic is encoded in this priority. <coughs> Okay, so now I will pass this term to the right, but to the left, sorry, and divide by delta t. Okay, so I got on the right, on the left, I got this, which is almost the time derivative of u. And on the on the right, I got this one, which here I put this sum. Just this sum is equal to one. Okay, because when I start from some value of the magnetization, it's obvious that I will get I will get to some other value of the magnetization, right? So now we send delta t to zero and we get a nice equation which is a Maxwell equation, which is the which is which which says that the evolution in time of the distribution of the magnetization m is just the result of a balance between a gain term and a loss term. The gain term, the first one here, just tell me um, how you can get, how you can arrive in one interaction to, 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 to a magnetization equal to M. And the loss term is on the other side. You had magnetization equal to M, there was some kind of interaction, and you, 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 you went away from M. Okay. Now we can rewrite that in more like uh, in from a, a weak point of view, right? which would be useful later. So this means just that I will multiply on both sides by this function and sum over. Okay, just easy. Okay. I just one thing before. Um, mm -mm, yes, maybe I should have put that before that, but. But we'll go back to that later. Okay, so with I take my master equation, I multiply it on both sides by a test function, and I sum over. And then we just rewrite things a little bit. Okay. Nothing, nothing complicated. Just, just playing around with uh, m and m prime, m prime, and just here. The only thing I do here is just exchange m and m prime. And then put put the two sums together, right? So we got that. And this formulation is just the weak formulation of the master equation, but it will be most useful on Friday when we we'll, we will adopt a kinetic point of view on the modeling of uh, exchanges of a pin. It will be very useful there. Yeah. Okay, but you can see that. that now the good thing is, what does what is this integral concretely? What um, what kind of information this integral will give? Me? We can we can see recall that um, u t u u t here is just the distribution of the magnetization. Okay, the probability distribution of the magnetization. It tells you the magnetization will take this value with that probability, right? So we can think of this integral here 
just as an expected value, right? And phi is just some quantity we could observe of the macroscopic level. For instance, if if for phi we take the identity, okay, what do we get? We get the expected value of m, the expected value of the magnetization. Okay. When we take for phi m square, we take we get the expected value the, the second moment of this random variable. And this second moment minus the mean value squared give me the variance of the magnetization. So taking some specific function phi gives me information about the evolution of the moment of my magnetization of the, the magnetization, its mean value, its variance, and maybe we could do something from that. Right? But still, but and this is the essence of the weak point, uh, the weak point of view when studying partial differential equation, right? Okay, okay. So and you see that the the, the rate of changes of um, this expected value is just the you you just make the balance over all the possible transition from one value of the magnetization to another one, and in one transition you you just look at the jump made by phi and you average you are, you take the average over all the possible jumps in this gives you the rate of evolution of the expected value of phi. okay so this is pretty nice because we have a nice equation okay and we just notice that we did that without explicit reference to the voter dynamic or the snatched dynamic the, the precise dynamic is will be here. It's even within the probability. So now we will look at the values of these probabilities, right? So let's see. <laughs> okay. So recall that. So now I need to 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 see what are in you know, in one step of the dynamic when i choose two guys if they agree they convince another guy how the magnetization can change it, the magnetization magnetization cannot do anything completely because just let's go back to the definition of the magnetization right it's here what can happen in one step of the dynamic what can happen is that I, te I take two guys to agree, and let's say they agree because they all, both think both think one, okay? And they pick another guy, and if the other guy was thinking minus one, my two guys will convince him to think plus one. So what happened? The the third guy was convinced to switch from minus one to plus one. What does that mean for the magnetization? This means that n minus lost one. Okay, so n minus lost one because this guy was initially thinking minus one and then switched to plus one. And at the same time, the plus community gained one one person okay so what happened here this is n plus minus n minus over n a and then i got plus two over n so this is my so my magnetization passed from m plus to or n. This is one possible transition. The other possible transition is a symmetric of this one. When I pick two guys thinking the same, minus one. And they pick a third person, a third guy thinking, uh, thinking plus one. And they convince him 
to switch from plus one to minus one. And in that case, it's reversed. And you get that the new magnetization is the old magnetization minus two over n. And these are the two possibilities. The only two possibilities for uh, the changes in the values of the magnetization. And in the water dynamic, it's exactly the same because in the water dynamic, you pick one guy sinking, for instance, one. And this guy will pick another guy sinking minus one and will convince him to, to switch to plus one or the other way around. Okay. There is a third possibility, really, which would be I pick two guys and they do not agree. So nothing happens with the magnetization. Magnetization stays the same. Or my two guys do agree, and but they pick a, a third person already agreeing with them. So there is no change of opinion. Okay, so in that case, the magnetization stays the same. But this transition, I don't really care in my weak formulation of the master equation because in my weak formulation of the master equation, what I do is that I take the average, the average of all the jumps that my test function phi can do when switching from m to the new value of m. So. If the new value of m is the same as the old one, there is no jump, and I don't. Um, it doesn't sum. It doesn't add anything to my to my integral, right? So just let's remember for for the moment that that the magnetization can only change by plus two over n or minus two over n, right? And let's see what happens. Okay, so. We go back to uh, we go back we go back to the master equation here, and now it's quite easy because you see that the new value of the magnetization m prime can only be m plus or minus two, minus two over m. Right. Okay. So this is it. Okay. So this is really much much simple it's really simple this way right so now just to go a little bit further we need to compute these probabilities and now we will distinguish between the two dynamics okay the snatched dynamic with propagation of consensus agreement and the voter dynamic right because the, the computation of the probabilities are different okay but then for each of these two dynamics will compute the probability, put it there, and see what happens, and make just make a Taylor expansion. Because you see here that when n is very large, you would like to approximate this the, the jump of phi by, in that case, 2 over n times the derivative of phi. Okay? And so we will see this. This will give me a weak formulation of a partial differential equation, and we will see that the, we'll get at the end a diffusive equation for the snatched model and a first a first order transport equation for the, um, the no the diffusive equation for the Vorter model and a transport equation first order transport equation for the um, the snatched Right? And this process will be very useful on Friday. It will be called a grazing limit. And it will be very useful to approximate an integral differential equation to get a partial differential equation, like a four, which will be a focal point. OK, so let's say just there is one easy consequence we can already get. Just remember that. We, the test function phi, we can take anything we would like. Okay, so just take the identity. This means that here I'm looking at the mean value of the magnetization, at the evolution in time of the mean value of the magnetization. And when phi is the identity, okay, this is only 2 over n, and this one is minus 2 over n. Okay, so this gives me that. What happened? Okay, we will we'll compute these two priorities and we will get some, some interesting consequences. Okay, so first, 
let's see the voter model. Okay, so the voter model is the model where I choose a guy at, at random, another one at random, and the new guy copy the opinion of the first guy. So the magnetization changed by uh, adding 2 over n only when the first guy I picked has opinion plus one, and he convinces another one initially with opinion minus one to switch to opinion plus one. So I have to pick one guy with opinion plus one, and I do that with this probability because n plus is um, the, the number of individuals in the population thinking plus one. I multiply it by the probability of choosing a guy with opinion minus one in the, rem the remaining of the population. Okay. And then just make some, some easy computation, replacing uh, n plus and n minus by the magnetization and the total number of people in the population, right? Okay, just, but it's not, it's nothing. It's actually just, we just have to remember that uh, the magnetization is n plus minus n minus over n. And since n minus is n, minus n plus it's two over n plus minus n over n and from that we can uh, we get n plus in function of n and magnetization we do the same for we do the same for n minus and just we write things in a nice way and we end up with this expression okay but this is nothing just a very easy manipulation right okay all right. Okay. So now we can do the exactly the same with the other possible transition, which occurs when the magnetization loses to over n. And this happens when I pick a guy thinking minus one. Then I pick a guy, and this guy thinking minus one will convince another guy thinking initially plus one to switch to minus one. So this would be, this is almost the same computation. This would be n minus over n times n plus over n minus one. And you do the same, you change the same kind of computation and you end up casually with the same probability as before, okay? So that's nice. We have the probability of the two possible transitions for the magnetization. We have, we have them explicitly and in the voter model, this two transition occurs with the same priority because there is no, the, the bottom model is essentially symmetrical right, to the dynamic. So now, if we go back to the mean value of the magnetization, what happened? We just saw that these two priorities are the same. So here on the right hand side, I got zero. So this means that the mean value of the magnetization is conserved in time, meaning that uh, da, 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 here, the, the, at any time during the evolution, during the dynamic, the mean value of the magnetization must be equal, is equal to the mean, to the initial mean value of the magnetization. Okay, so this is nice. We have a conserved quantity. It's good, right? But still, it's one piece of information. For now, I still, I do not understand the dynamic, really. So, okay, let's go back to, let's go back to the math for equation, right? So, meaning that now we, we know the value of these two probabilities. We put them, we put them, uh, ba, 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 ba. we put them here, these two values, they are the same, and we write things, we write things nicely, what do we get? We get this one. We get this expression, right? <laughs> and everything which is uh, like uh, 1 over n, I will just forget about it. Just because at the end, I will take the limit when n goes to infinity, the limit of an infinitely large population, right? 
Okay, so now, what do we get? Look, this is not bad. If you remember something of uh, numerical analysis, this looks very much like a discretization of uh, second derivative, right? And it's quite easy to see. Just we make a Taylor expansion up to the second order. Here, okay, we, we got phi of m plus phi of m, which cancels with this one. Then we got um, the derivative, the derivative of phi times 2 over m plus the, de the derivative of phi times minus 2 over m. We cancel out. We just, we just arrive at the, the second order derivative. We make the computation. We got that. Not bad. Still, this is looking very much like the weak formulation of a diffusive equation, which is nice because from the simulation of the water, of the water dynamic, we, we already observed there was um, like a diffusive behavior, right? Okay, just we just have to clean things up a little bit, right? Okay, so let's clean things up. Let's see that. Okay, so first we need to rescale time here. Just to, to make this part a little bit uh, easier. This means that my new time scale will be this term. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, for instance, this means that if t is equal to 1, Tau is equal to 1 over n square, which is very small because n will be very large. Okay. So this means that on, on this new time scale tau, okay, for instance, when tau is equal to 1, this means my, my initial time scale, where at each minute of time I picked two guys, I'm, I, I already um, let a lot of time go by. And this is very intuitively, this is normal because. In a big population, one interaction doesn't make much of a difference. Okay, two guys convince the third guy, but one sorry, in the water dynamic, one guy convinces another guy. But this is one guy in a sea of a big number of individuals. So I want I macro, macroscopically I won't see much. To see something really, I have to let time goes by a lot okay okay i have to let i have to to let the time to to have a lot of interactions to see something changing in my in my system right this is the meaning of this uh, time time rescale right so we formally take the limit and we end up with this equation nice okay and this equation here is the weak formulation of the diffusive equation, right? Just I put the two derivative of the test function on this side, and I've got this equation, which is a diffusive equation, which is nice. Okay. And look at the diff diffusion coefficient. It's 1 minus m squared. It's 0 when m is equal to plus or minus 1. That is, is it's 0 when. Um, and almost everybody in the population, it's very close to zero when almost everybody in the population has the same opinion, either plus one or either minus one. Yeah, so remember that when the magnetization is equal to one, this means that, or close to one, this means that almost everybody in the population thinks plus one, right? So this says that when you get to, um, to an extreme value of the magnetization, when you arrive close to um, a, uh, a complete agreement in the population is a diffusion slow down, right? Because it's a lot. It takes you a lot, of, uh, a lot more effort to um, to see changes. If almost everybody thinks one, it remains only a few individuals thinking minus one. So it's it's not easy to to pick them in the dynamic, right? But there is a trick here, which that's why I. I will stick to the weak formulation. It's really better because when I pass from this integral to this to this thing here, 
just I'm assuming that my V, this is my distribution of um, natural rate distribution of, of the magnetization after the time rescaling, I'm assuming it to be smooth, to be regular. But this, this might be misleading because we, we saw in the simulation that starting from a direct mass, there was this diffusive behavior, but at the end, we observed that two direct masses were building up at plus one and minus one. So this tells me that at the end, I won't get something smooth, something regular. Okay, so it, it's not that a good idea to write the equation that way because it gives you the false impression that everything's smooth and it won't be the case, right? At the end, in the limit when t goes to infinity, I expect direct masses. So maybe it's better to stick with um, with a function from time to the set of probability measures. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, this is, this uh, this deduction here is exactly the deduction that Slanina and Larika did in the in the paper. They, they did it quickly, much quicker than than I showed you. And here I presented you the Maxwell equation, the weak formulation of the Maxwell equation, which which will be useful on Friday, or maybe starting tomorrow. Okay, when we will be playing with the kinetic formulation, right? Okay, so. Now, we got the equation, okay? At least informally, we got an equation. What do we do with that? And this is where things get, um, are not very rigorous in Stanina and Lavica paper. But this is fine, they are physicists. They don't care much about precise mathematical rigor because they end up with exactly the good results. So what they did is that they observed that uh, just this equation, you can solve it explicitly using separation variable because uh, you know the eigenvalues and eigenfunction of this operator. The eigenfunctions are exactly the eigenbauer polynomials, and you use eigenvalues are known explicitly, explicitly known. But the thing is that they also added these two direct masses as eigenfunctions, which is fine because we know from the simulation these two direct masses should be here, okay? And these are eigenfunctions, okay, in the kernel of the operator, because if re you replace, like thinking about distribution, right? Thinking weakly, if you replace u but by one of these direct masses, you are multiplying this function by this direct mass, okay? But when you multiply this function by this direct mass, you only care for, um, of you only care about the value of this function when m is equal to plus and minus one. And in that case, this function is equal to zero. So you are in the kernel of the operator. So that's fine. Okay. So these two values are in the kernel. Are in the kernel. And Slanina and Larika make, uh, they explain everything about the separation of variable method, how to manage it, everything. And they, they end up at the end with an explicit formulation for the solution of the equation. And they observe that this equation is written as a sum. So there is a sum with, there is a part with the two direct masses plus a sum with the positive eigenvalues. <laughs> and this part goes to zero as t goes to infinity. You just, at the end, you recover the part corresponding to these two eigenfunctions, right? And explicitly, they get the coefficient of this eigen. The, these two direct masses. Okay, so at the end they, they get that the distribution of the magnetization as time goes by converge weakly. We'll go we'll go back about that. Um, how do we what do we mean by convergence of probability measures? This distribution converge converges to the sum of these two direct masses, one at plus one, one at two minus one, with this coefficient. What does that mean? M0 here is, what is it? It's the initial mean value of the magnetization. And we know the mean value of the magnetization is, is a conserved quantity, right? And this is fine. If you take the mean value of that, you get M0 because you will get 
1 minus m0 over 2 times minus 1 plus 1 plus m0 over 2 times 1. That is this minus this, which is exactly m0. So that's fine. We have the conservation of the, of the mean value of the magnetization. We already know that. Okay, But here it's better because we have the, the final stationary state. right? But it's singular. It's a, priority, a real priority measure, quite singular. And what does that what does that mean? This, if you try with, if you start as in the simulation I showed you with a given magnetization, a precise magnetization. Right? In the simulation I put, I started with uh, a magnetization equal to 0 0.2. Then you will end up, due to the stochasticity of the dynamic, you will end up with a final magnetization equal to one, that is everybody thinks one, with probability one plus 0 0.2, in my simulation, over two, that is 0 0.6. And with the remaining probability of 0 0.4, you will end up with a magnetization equal to minus one, that is everybody thinks minus one, okay? So whatever the value, the initial value of the magnetization, between minus one and one, different from minus one and one, there is every time there is a probability of ending up with either everybody thinking plus one or either everybody thinking minus one. And you have here the precise value of this probability, right? And this is pretty good. We got it. How, would, how would, did we get it? We just wrote the master equation, found transition priorities from m to m plus or minus to over m, make some Taylor expansion and end up with a nice equation, diffusive equation, which could be solved explicitly. In that case, we are lucky. Really, we are lucky. Okay? Because usually, as you know, as you know, it, as you know it very well, usually it's very uncommon to, to be able to solve explicitly an equation. But here you could do that, and we have everything worked out. Right. Okay, so that's good. We could deal with the first model, with a voter dynamic, which has a diffusive behavior. Okay, so now let's see what happens with the other dynamic, okay, the snatched dynamic, where I pick two guys, and if these two guys agree, that share the same opinion, they convince the unit, the unit forces and convince a third guy. And in the simulation, we, sh we already saw that the behavior was different. The behavior of the distribution of magnetization was quite different. It was not a diffusive behavior. It was more like, like if, like if you were, like if the initial distribution of the magnetization were just traveling with maybe some, some small distortion, but in any, essentially traveling. There was, there was no diffusive behavior. So let's see how we could do that. Let's see that. <laughs> okay, so we go back to the, the master equation in weak form. And this, this, uh, uh, this one. Okay, and now we just have to we we know that the transition for the magnetization are the same as before. Okay, we can go we can go m can go to m prime equal to m plus two over n or minus two over n, right? And we just have to to find to find the the transition priorities. This is the only difference. Everything of the everything concerning the dynamic is there. So let's do this. Okay, okay, let's do this for the snatched dynamic. So we write the, di the the priority transition. There is a small computation, with, but it's not hard. Okay, I didn't put the, the details here because they are quite boring. Really, if you're interested, I can I can write them later, but they are not complicated. It's really it's some it's the same kind of reasoning as here, except that here it was very easy. Uh, that's why I put it <laughs> honestly. For the, the snatched dynamic, it's a little bit more tedious because you have to pick at random two guys thinking the same. So you have to pick at random two guys, let's say thinking plus one. This comes with some probability, then you have to pick a third guy thinking minus one, which comes with another probability, and then you have to um, just rewrite everything nicely, 
in terms of the magnetization and the total number of individuals, right? But it essentially it's the same kind of mutation as before, except that it's more it's more tedious, really, but not difficult. <coughs> okay, right. So I I already did the work, right? And we end up with um, with, with, with 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 these two priorities. And now these two priorities are not the same, right? There is a slight uh, dissymmetry, asymmetry between them, right? Because it's not like the bottom model. You have to pick two guys thinking the same to commit the third guy, right? Because in, whereas in the voter dynamic, you just pick at random a guy which convinced another guy. And that's it. No matter the opinion of the first guy, plus one or minus one. Okay, it's completely symmetric. Okay. So now I put these two probabilities in my master equation, right? And exactly, just show you the master equation. So here the sum is just, it's this one here, right? I, we know the two transition probabilities. We make a Taylor expansion of these two terms, right? Exactly as before, except that now, due to the asymmetry of the problem, we don't get, we don't have to go to the second order derivative for phi. We'll, we'll just arrive to the first order derivative for phi. And here is a difference. Here lies the difference because going only to the first order derivative tells me I will get a first order equation, which will be a transport equation. Okay. So what do we get? We get this, this equation here. So, I already in, uh, put these two transition probability in my master equation. I already did the Taylor expansion, and I got this. Right. So this is good, but notice that fundamentally this is different from the equation we got for the bottom model because here we are just we only have one derivative and not two, and this is due to the asymmetry of the Nash dynamic with respect to the symmetry of the bottom, right? Okay. So now, how do we proceed? We do exactly as before. We will send n to infinity just to get rid of this thing here, and make a time rescaling just to to absorb this two n. Okay. But this intuition here is the same as before. We do, we have to make a time with scaling because in one step of the dynamic, only one, one individual in the population switch opinion. So one individual in, uh, in, in a very large population of n individuals, I won't see it microscopically. So I will have to, to, um, uh, to make a lot of interactions, a lot of steps of the dynamic to see something, some big change, right? So this is this is the meaning of the, the time we stay. So we do that. We pass to the limit. Uh, don't care about the details. Okay. We'll be a little, we'll see a little bit of that later. And we got this equation. Right. And exactly as before, if V V was smooth in M, then we could make an integration by parts. And in that case, we would arrive at the, the weak form this this would be the weak formulation of this first order equation right but be cautious because v of t may be not smooth okay. indeed since this is a, a transport equation we'll solve it later there is no regularizing effect so my at any time t my v has the same regular, regularity as the initial condition if initially my distribution of magnetization is singular, okay, as direct masses, for instance, or anything else, then this uh, singularity propagates through time. Okay, so I won't get any regularizing effect, right? And moreover, we already know from the simulation that we should expect a direct mass at the end, at the limit. So it's not, it's useful to, 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 re, to, um, to realize that this is the weak formulation of a transport equation because it will give us a method to solve the equation. 
which is the standard characteristic methods, which we will need to adapt slightly to deal with measures. But essentially, we will get some intuition there. Okay. But I, we need to we need to be careful and just remember that at any time v is a priori a priority distribution and my, which might not be right <coughs> okay so this is nice we got an equation which is fundamentally different than the diffusive equation we got in the bottom which is nice because it uh, it's it's okay with the simulations we I show you right so now let's say if we apply, we, if we would apply this uh, method of characteristics, which is very classical, if we will review it tomorrow, we could find the explicit solution of this equation in case the initial condition is a smooth function. Right? And this would give me this function here, which is nice, but well, because I got an explicit solution, but honestly, it's not very um, crystal clear what happened there. Right? So it's not, and moreover, another thing I, I don't like much about that is that, okay, this is fine when the initial condition is, is a smooth function, but what happened when, when not, when it's not, when my initial condition is not smooth function, when it's um, a measure? What, do, what can I do in that case? And this explicit solution doesn't explain much about the dynamic of my solution. What happened? When the, when time goes to infinity, what what happened to my to my to the solution of this equation to my distribution of, of magnetization? Just looking at this explicit solution is not very easy to to see what happened. But the good thing is that we will see tomorrow that the method of characteristics tells us essentially that everything that matters is here. This is. The thing is, this is the, the vector field driving the dynamic. So, if you can find the trajectories associated to this vector field, which will give you, by the way, this kind of expression here, then you can solve the dynamic. But, but most importantly, what will what will matter here is the sign of this this expression here. And you see that one minus m square. Is always positive, non negative, because m magnetization is between minus one and one, right? So the sign is given by just by m, right? <laughs> and just I make a, a quick picture about that, but uh, we'll see it better, I hope, tomorrow. Just just let me write just to, to finish. Let's say my distribution of. This is my initial distribution of uh, my u0, right? And here I got, no, I got my magnetization, plus one, minus one. Then plus one and minus one, yeah. And what this kind of equation do tell me, transport equation, it tells me that essentially I will take my u0, and move it, make it travel, following the trajectories of this vector field. Now, this vector field, how it is? Well, it's like this, right? Because the sign of m times n minus m square is the sign of m. So it's positive when m is positive, negative when m is negative. So this means that. The, all the mass with, which is here on the positive side will travel towards the, towards the right. And at the end, it will give me a direct mass here. And all the mass which is on the right, on the left side, will travel to the, towards the left. And will give me a direct mass here right okay the only case where some mass remains quiet is where there is 
the direct mass, some positive mass at zero. In that case, this mass stays put, doesn't move. But otherwise, everything moves. So for instance, in the simulation, what, do we, what did we do? Initially, the magnetization was equal to 0 0.2, right? So this means that the distribution of, us, of the magnetization was only a direct mass located at 0 0.2. Okay, but I'm on the positive side. So if I'm on the positive side, everything's moving towards the right. And this is exactly what we observed on the simulation. All the masses were moving towards the right and accumulate in its, it accumulated at plus one. And the velocity at which it moves is given by, well, precisely this vector field. Okay. You see that when you get closer to one, one minus m square goes, get, gets closer to zero. So my direct mass is moving slower and slower, right? But at the beginning, when m is far away from one, my direct mass moves quickly. So this is pretty good because we could found we could find equations for the distribution of the magnetization in two dynamics using well quite an informal procedure. This is true, but which gives me the right equation at the end. And this equation qualitatively gives me exactly the behavior we observed at the beginning in the simulation, right? And it can, it can give you more than that, right? It can give you time, time to consensus, okay? How much time do you need to wait before almost everybody in the population thinks all plus one or all minus one, which is so important, right? And you can do everything because you get the solution to the equation explicitly. So that's pretty cool. <coughs> And this would be this this would be a, a motivation tomorrow to study this kind of equation, but more in a more general setting, just replacing uh, this uh, vector field here by a general vector field and see what what could we do, how we could solve that in general, in not maybe in one D, maybe in two, three, or R D. I don't know. Okay, we'll see that. And then we'll see another kind of uh, modeling technique, much based on a kinetic point of view, following uh, works of uh, Lorenzo Paleschi and Giuseppe Toscani, which will lead to this kind of equation, but trickier, where the vector field itself will depend on the solution of the equation. So we will get a non-local equation. See what happens there. And maybe we'll see all the models, like for uh, the Kukas May flocking models, which lead to, to this kind of equation, okay? which are trickier to study, but much more interesting, right? Because it's, um, it's, it's as if the system, the, the individual by itself, generates a vector field which uh, fit forward, uh, act upon the, the, the behavior of the population, okay? So we'll see that. And just um, mm -mm. Uh, the precise, you know, the rigorous study of uh, this equation was done uh, in this paper, which is not that old, by Aletina di Toscani. And they showed the well poseness, meaning that uh, starting from an initial condition, you, get, you have a unique solution, and they, they give the asymptotic behavior of the solution. But what I wanted to, to show you today is uh, how you can get, how you can obtain this equation from using easy techniques. And to see that in the end, just, we, we just look at um, two, two possible um, dynamic rules di for the exchange of opinion. Take one guy, he convinces another guy. Take two guys, the unit forces, and convince another guy. You can invent all the all the rules you want, right? So they will give you different equations and maybe with different behaviors. And this is not that easy, but behind we need to deal with first order transport equation for measure valued solution, which is not 
um, classical topics, but which is very useful in this kind of uh, modeling, but also in biology. And there is a nice, very recent book about that. I will find the reference for tomorrow. So this is um, this is an interesting subject with a lot of ongoing research, and which gives you a lot of freedom to in the modeling part and in in the mathematical part. There are there are some nice stuff. Just imagine if you could couple this kind of dynamic with an epidemiological dynamic like a CIS model or a SEER model, and see how both of them interact. The social dynamic and the disease dynamic, how they mingle, how they mingle. And you will get an, a nice couple of equation, most probably a transport equation like this one, coupled with some ODEs for the disease dynamic, right? Okay, so you got this is kind of, this, this could become quite complicated from a mathematical point of view, but this is very relevant from a modeling point of view. Okay. Okay, so I think that uh, this is that's all for today. And I hope maybe you have some question or I don't know.